All right, welcome to part three of the Dead Zone aiming tutorial. We're just going to continue right where we left off. So the last thing we need to do here, or at least I think the last thing, is updating the gun's rotation to look at where the cursor is. So again, let's just make a function for that to keep things nice and separated. We will call this update gun rotation. And then let's add this to our category and then set it to private. All right, so the idea here is we want to first calculate the desired rotation of the gun based on where the mouse is. And then we want to rotate the gun to that desired rotation. Um, and there are a few little cases we need to check for along the way. So let's start with the figuring out the rotation. So to do that, we need to figure out where the world space location of the cursor is. So we can do that by saying get player controller, and then we can say convert screen location to world space. So the screen location we want to convert is obviously our cursor position. Um, so we can use our handy little get cursor viewport position, and we can split this, and we can bring the X into the X and the Y into the Y. And then we want to calculate a rotation from it. So essentially what we're going to do here is we're going to, maybe I should just draw this so you can understand. It will just take a second. So if you have your character here, and this is like a side view, right? And so he's sitting here and I'll just draw his gun. So this is his gun, right? He's looking to the right here. Um, the cursor in 3d space is technically like you know right here this is where the camera is and if you move the cursor up it's right here and it's down here if you move it down so it's like it's on a 2d plane that's like uh parallel with where his face is or where the camera is but we want this dot to actually be moved way out in the world so that way we can calculate this angle from his face to where the dot is and so if he moves the cursor down then it would be down here and we can say okay he's looking down this way and then we can use this angle here to determine which way this gun needs to face so that's sort of what we're going to do so we want to take the location and say uh, vector plus vector because we want to move it out into the world so we want to multiply this by some value so we'll say field multiply and then whatever value you put here is kind of up to you um it's sort of hard to explain exactly what this does but you want to put in a I'm going to put 2000 or 2000. You want to put a value here, which is like a general range of what distance you're going to be shooting things at, because essentially after whatever number you put here, so after 2000 units, after the projectile fires 2000 units, like a distance of 2000 units, the projectile will be at the location of the cursor. So uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain, but just use 2000. You can change this number when we're done and you can kind of see what it does and you'll see how it affects the bullet. But you want a kind of high number here, like 2000, um, like so. Okay, and then, so that's gonna move the dot like out here. So now it's out here. And then we wanna calculate this line. So we wanna normalize this first of all, so that we just get a direction from it. So normalize. And then we wanna make a rotation from it. So we will say, make rotation and then we want to make the rotation from the x z axes because this is going to be our x because this is forward and then z is just going to be up so we'll say x z and then z is just up so we'll say vector up oops vector up and so that gives us the rotation um, that we're looking in um, and so this is currently in world space but when we rotate the gun we want to rotate the gun in relative space so we want to convert this world space rotation to a relative space rotation. So we can do that by getting the transform of our actor. So get actor transform. And we can say uh, inverse transform rotation. And that'll put this world space rotation into relative, into a relative, into relative space relative to our actor. So now this is the relative rotation of where we're looking, which is the rotation that we want the gun to be uh, rotated at. So we can then take this and say promote to variable. 
Um, actually, let's make this a local variable. So actually delete this and delete the variable it created and right click and say promote to local variable because it's, we don't need it um, anywhere else besides inside of this function so it could be local. And then we will hook this up over here. So this is actually the first execution pin. So it's a whole bunch of math and then finally we get an execution pin. And let's call this desired relative rotation. So again, this is the desired rotation of our gun in relative space, relative to our actor, right? So after this, we wanna do two things. We wanna update the pitch and the yaw. So we're gonna do a sequence. So again, hold down S like so. Um, so one thing you'll notice here, I'll try to explain this best again. So when you, this is my other project, obviously. So when you look left and right, and you look so far to the left, it, when it, that starts rotating you, your character actually rotates. So if I had a body, my actual physical body would rotate, like the capsule is rotating to the left and to the right, if that makes sense. But that doesn't happen when you look up. Like when you look up, the capsule doesn't actually rotate. And I can show you that real quick, because otherwise this won't make any sense what I'm doing. Um, if I click on capsule component, and I'm just gonna uncheck hidden in game so you can actually see the capsule component. And then if I run this, so when I look to the left, you'll see this capsule component is actually rotating with me, right? But when I look up and then I eject here, so you can see what's going on, you can see the capsule component doesn't actually rotate up. It stays perfectly vertical. So we need to keep that in account because when we rotate um, to the left and the right, it's actually gonna rotate the whole gun in world space. But when we look up and down, it's not gonna actually rotate the gun at all. So, sorry, that was my other project. So over here, what we wanna do is we want to check to see if the previous cursor position and the new cursor position on the x-axis have, have changed. Because if they haven't changed, then we don't actually want to change the relative rotation of the gun because it's going to be rotating with the character. So drag in the previous cursor position and right click and split it and drag in the current cursor position and right click and split it. Because again, we're only looking at the X here first. And we wanna know if they are equal. So we'll say equal float. And then we'll do a branch. Actually, we should probably do delete this and do nearly equal because it's okay if they're not like perfectly aligned just because of floating point error. So if they're nearly equal, We'll hook this up to then zero. Then we want to rotate the gun to match whatever our desired rotation is. So we'll drag in our skeletal mesh, which again is our gun, and we'll say set relative rotation. Hook that up to the true. And then for the rotation, we want to split this because again, we only want to modify the uh we only want to modify the y'all, the left and the right. So for the X and the Y, the roll and the pitch, we want to keep it the same. So we're actually going to copy this and say, get relative rotation and then split this guy. And we're going to keep roll and pitch the same. And then for the Z value, we're going to pass in our desired. So if we come down here, we can drag in our local desired relative rotation and we can split this. And this is going to be our y'all value. Okay, so we can run this real quick just to see it working for the left and the right at least. So if we run this, oh, we didn't actually call this function yet, did we? So go back to the um, tick dead zone aiming. And then at the end here, the last thing we wanna do after we set the viewport, the position of the viewport, we wanna call update gun rotation, like so. And now if we go ahead and rerun this, you can see when I look to the left, oh, what did I do wrong? Uh, oh, so yeah, we didn't quite do this correct. So we actually forgot to do a subtraction here. So, um, cause we actually, we got the dot position over here, but we need to subtract the, um, the world location of the gun from it. And that will give us this vector. So actually right here, let's just move this to the side. So before we normalize it, we want to do a vector subtract, so say vector minus vector. And then we will we want the location of the gun. So we'll say skeletal mesh, which is our gun, get world location. 
and plug that into there. And then now this should probably work better. Um, oh, right, okay. Yeah, uh, one little thing. So inside the update gun rotation, um, we actually want to check if they're not nearly equal because otherwise it's going to be really jumpy like that. So we'll say not boolean and hook that up. All right, sorry about that. Hopefully now it should work if they're not nearly equal. Um, okay, so now we can run this and there we go. So when I look left and right, you can see the gun rotates left and right. Um, and then if I look all the way left, it starts rotating me. If I look all the way right, then it starts rotating me. And again, the turn rate, if you want to make it faster or slower, you can just adjust the base turn rate variables down here on the left. So if I bump this up to like one, for example, and I look left, then I look really fast left and really fast right. But I'm just going to keep it down at 0 0.1 for right now. And then I'll ignore this print string I added that when I was trying to figure out what was going on. Um, okay, so now the only other thing we need to do is the Y and then we'll be done. So we're going to do that off of the sequence here. So basically over here, we can just copy this because we pretty much want to do something similar here. So I'm just going to copy all this and then paste it down here and then drag this down into the thin or drag from the thin one down here and just kind of make this a little ni nicer. Okay, so for this part, um, we always want to do this. We don't need to do this check here because again, when you rotate left and right, or when you rotate up and down, the capsule doesn't rotate up and down. So we don't need to do this check. Um, but down here, we want to flip this around. So we want to keep the roll and the yaw. So I'm going to put this here. And then the pitch is the one we want to change. So the pitch is going to go up here. And now if we compile and run this, you can see my up works, my down works, my left works, and my right works. And I think I might bump up the rates a little bit because it is kind of slow. So we'll say like 0 0.5 maybe and 0 0.5. And then again, you can also change these uh, half zones. If you think the dead zone is too small, you can bump it up to like 0 0.35. Obviously, you don't want to go zero, bigger than 0 0.5 because that's half the screen, so you can't do that. But maybe make both of these 0 0.35. And then you can see that it goes even further to the edge of the screen. Up works, down works, and you can move this gun around to put it in a better spot if you want. And then when we fire, you'll see it fires our projectiles. Um, and if you want them to go more to where the cursor is, you just need to remove gravity. It also didn't look like they were coming out of the right spot. Let me double check. Oh, we forgot to put the actual socket name here. Um, what did we call this socket? Let me look real quick. If we look back, what did we call this guy? You guys probably did this because I probably just forgot. Projectile socket. So if you forgot to do it, just right click and say um, copy selected sockets, I think. And then come back here and we want to put this here. Nope, that was not what I wanted to copy. Um, maybe I can copy it this way. There we go. Copy and paste. And so that should get it spawning at the front of the gun. And again, if you want it to go more towards the cursor is, that's just because it has gravity right now. So if you want to remove gravity, you can just open up the first person projectile. And then over here on the right, you can search for gravity, or I think you have to select projectile first, yeah. And then set the gravity scale down to zero or something less. And then when you fire it, you'll see it's going to the cursor. So yeah, that pretty much concludes this tutorial. If you guys liked the video, uh, please leave a like and subscribe. I also have a Patreon. If you guys want to support me there, that's always appreciated. And there's also a Discord link in the description of my video. All that information is in the description of the video. Feel free to join the Discord server. If you have questions or you just want to come hang out, I'd love to see you guys there. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.